Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're laying down before the children of Israel go into the land. The laws, the regulations, how to be a nation before they go into the promised land that God's given them. They just cannot go in there and just do whatever they want. Especially being a people of God. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. That thou may, mightest fear the Lord thy God. That's important because if you don't fear God, you don't fear nobody. You don't fear anything. And that's the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs says. To keep his statutes and his commandments. You'll fear God, you'll do right. Which I command thee. Thou and thy sons and thy sons' sons. All the days of thy life. And that thy days may be prolonged and we saw that last night and honor thy father and mother obedience to your parents will give you longer life obeying the law the statutes and the commandments for israel's for jews in the old testament will give them longer life uh murder somebody and you lost your life Committing adultery, you lost your life. And there were things that if you did, you would be stoned. You would be uh, cut off. And these laws and regulations will help you to be right with God, be help you to be right with the children of Israel, will be help you to be right in the land. And you would not need to fear if you'd done right. Hear therefore, O Israel, and deserve to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily. So another thing promised, not only longer life, but more children. And a more populous by doing what God told them to do. Now none of this is for the church age. And you say, well, how do you know that this is not for the church age? Look at the Apostle Paul. That guy loved the Lord, gave his life to the Lord, did everything he could for the Lord. As far as we know, that guy witnessed to everybody. And he ended up staying the most of his life in a jail. And he had all the pearls. Here, your promise in the law that if you do what God told you to do, you will be blessed. And that's why when the question comes up and Jesus says, you know, about the rich man. And he says, you know, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. They're like, well, wait a minute. If you're rich and if you're doing right according to the law, that's God blessing you. And then when Jesus comes, there was one, I think he was blind. And the apostles turned to Jesus and said, well, who sinned? His mother or his father? See, something had to happen for him to be in that condition. Because one of the conditions of this longer life and ability to be prosperous is that you obey God. So when you get to the to the Gospels and as you're working your way through the book of Acts, Things get totally switched from what the law promises to what salvation promises you under the gospel. And that you may increase mightily. You know, a lot of born-again Bible-believing families that I know who want to have children are unable to have children. As the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee, in the land, there's that, yeah, there's that land, mark that land. That floweth with milk and honey. Now verses in 4 and 5. We're going to get the great commandment. This is a prayer today of the Israelites. Shema. That's what it's called. The Shema. Hear O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy soul. With all thy might. Now. We get in verse 5. I mean verse 4. Excuse me. The Lord our God is one Lord. That one Lord. Is where the Jews get the idea that there's no trinity. The Jesus Christ or the the Holy Spirit because he can't be three gods he's got to be one God and this is where the Jehovah Witnesses fail too 
God is one God. So there can't be a trinity. There can't be three gods. And yet the three gods, they think, is one God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Everything you got. That's a great commandment we're going to see in a minute. That tops the Ten Commandments. So when somebody comes up and says, oh, I keep the commandments. Really? With all your heart. Well, what commandment number is that? With all thy soul. 11, 12, 13. With all thy might. 15, 16. No. The great commandment. And let's look at it. Matthew 22, 37. The only place you won't find this is in John. So Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 37, make sure, Matthew 22, 37. And we'll start in 35. And one of them, which was a lawyer of the law, lawyer of the law, asked him a question, tempting him. Oh, uh oh. They were trying to trick Jesus and saying, Master, they didn't really believe that. Which is the great commandment in the law? Of all the laws, Master, what is the greatest? What is number one? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, uh-oh, with all thy mind. Deuteronomy says, with all thy might. Jesus says, with all thy mind. Give it all your might. You better put your mind into it. Now watch this. This is what Jesus says, but what we're reading right now. This is the first and great commandment. So when I hear you can't keep the first commandment, God first all the time, and then what we have here, what Jesus says is the first command. I mean, heart, soul, and all your might. I can't do that. The second is like unto it. The second. Okay, the second commandment, thou shalt have no other idols. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It's God first, others next, and there's no you. Now what's important about love thy neighbor as thyself? Do you realize, and we'll get to it later on, but do you realize, let's say you accidentally killed somebody. Accidentally. 100% beyond a shadow of doubt, it was an accidental killing. Whatever it is, you know, you're out there cutting down trees and the tree, you know, you yell to him, hey, watch out the tree, and the tree nails him right down and kills him. Do you know what one of the questions is when it comes to about you killing somebody? Did you hate him? If you hated him in times past, that was two grounds for murder. And now let's look over to, let's look at Mark 12. Mark chapter 12, verse number 29. Mark 12. This is important because this is a prayer that the Jews pray today. And God's not listening because, unlike with the Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus is God. And look at verse 28. And one of the scribes came. So who's the lawyers? They were the scribes. Who are the scribes? They were the lawyers. What did scribes do? They're the ones that kept the scriptures, were reliable for the scriptures, that rewrote the scriptures. And Kate, you know, if it got too old, they were the ones that copied the scriptures. And having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked them which is the first which is the first commandment of all now matthew says the greatest commandment mark says the first commandment, first and the great jesus answered 
the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel. Now that all oh, got their attention. Why? Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Definitely got their attention. They would hear that in the synagogue. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. There it is. And all with, thy, and with all thy soul. With all thy mind. With all thy strength. Oh, well, look at that. Jesus, you added to the word, Holy Spirit. Mind. Well, that matches Deuteronomy. Verse 5. Strength. That matches Matthew. So we got four points now. We got to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, our eternal bearing that we have, our thinking, our mind, and our going, our, our pushing, our doing, what we're supposed to strive to do. Go for the gusto. It's supposed to be God. This is the first commandment. There's no self. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is none other commandment greater than these. You mean not men wearing what pertains to what a woman wears, not what a woman wears pertains to what a man wears? You mean not having polyester and cotton? Those are not the great commandments? Absolutely not. And then one more place, the Gospel of Luke 10. Luke 10. And now we go for a little change here in Luke chapter 10. Scripture is scripture. You understand. There's no contradictions. Luke chapter 10, verse number, what did I say? 30, 27. 27. And we'll look at 25 again. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. Well, Mark didn't mention tempting, but two places. There it is. Say, Master. Well, that fit. Maybe Mark didn't hear what Matthew and Luke heard. I don't know. I'm not going to question the Holy Spirit. Master, what sh shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he, this is the lawyer here, to say, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to them, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. And then he goes, Well, who shall I be doing? And then he goes into the parable of the Good Samaritan. He said, Well, wait a minute. Jesus is quoted as Jesus saying it, and now we see that the lawyer is saying it. Oh, how do you know that they both didn't say it, and that Jesus repeated it, or he repeated it after Jesus? I mean, this was double doubled, it was said twice. To make sure that this lawyer said it, then Jesus would say, okay, this is what it is, and say it. That's how important it was. It was actually said twice. Every Jew would know this, verse 4 and 5. It would be in the synagogue. So Jesus would make sure you would hear it right and correctly, that you did not get a perversion of the, of the, te of the text. And you're sure not going to get a perversion of the text by Jesus speaking it. And we're moving, when now that Jesus in the gospel is alive and well and doing well, and as he's heading to, to Jerusalem to be crucified on that tree outside the gates of Jerusalem, we start moving into the book of Acts, we start getting the transition, things are changing. So, here, O Israel, is not the church. The Lord our God is one Lord. So if I believe that God is one God, that there's no Jesus Christ and there's no Holy Spirit as gods, as Jehovah Witnesses believe, so they have taken this verse out of context. It says, O Israel. Well, let me ask you a question today. You get a Jewish person. And he bows the knee and he receives Jesus Christ as his Savior and Messiah from his heart. And with his mouth he confesses the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he Israel? No. No longer. He's a child of God by the Holy Spirit. So the Lord our God to him would be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
But people can't grasp that. They can't understand that. And it makes it hard. But you got to use scripture with scripture. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing with the Trinity that I can say and I can't explain. I'm not going to try to explain it. Is it's like this. God the Father, one. God, God the, the Son, one. And God the Holy Spirit, one. One times one times one equals one. And that's the best way you're going to... There's, there's no one else who can explain that. So, well. It's one of those things in the Bible we cannot explain. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Paul says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. You need that heart to be... If you were not saved from your heart, you're not saved. And what's the heart of the people? Oh, Jesus, you're so one, you're great. Here he comes into Jerusalem. And then they yell, crucify him. Their heart was not with God. And with all thy soul, that's your internal being. That is who you are in the eternal afterlife. And with all that might, go for it. Go for the gusto. Go for Jesus. Go for God. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy, there it is again, heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto the children. And thou shalt talk of them. All right. Fathers, it is your job to teach your children about the history of the Bible. It's not the pastor's job. It's not the Sunday school teacher's job. Paul writes to Timothy that, uh, that if a woman has a question, she's supposed to go to her husband. And he's supposed to. If a woman has it, let her ask her husband. It's going to be a lot of men today who are husbands and, and fathers. They're going to stand before God. They're going to think, oh, it's great. I've done this. Look at all these things. I've done that. And they're going to stand wanting because they didn't take care of their own family. Now, you can pay the bills, but do you take the role of the husband and father is teaching your children. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house. That's exactly what we're doing right now as a family. See that? So maybe some of our unsaved friends or family. Oh, you do that with your family? You're doing this in the video of your family and all that? It's in the Bible. There it is. When thou walkest by the way. As you're walking, you're to talk of the scriptures, you're to talk of God, you're to speak about, there's nothing better than God. When thou liest down, and when thou rises up and he's laid down, when you get up, talk about the Lord, talk about the scriptures. And thou shalt, wait a minute, yeah, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. Almost like a little wristwatch kind of thing. And they shall be frontlets between thy eyes. So let's look at Matthew 23, 5 and see what has happened. Matthew 23, verse 5. And they have turned this to see, look at what I am doing. Matthew 23, verse 5. If you didn't know what this was, here's what it is. Matthew 23, 5. And these are all the words of Jesus. But for all their works they do for to be seen of men. Look at me. Look how great I am. See the shirt? I'm a priest. See that? They make broad their phylacteries. You say, what on earth is a phylactery? That's just what we're talking about over here. They have a little box they put on. I've never seen it, but they put it on the front of their head, and it has a scripture inside that box. They wear a... It's like a watch in your hand, and inside that box there are scriptures. And there were some men that had this big old box. Look, look you see, my mind's so big. And they're taking it too literal. But the word of God is to be as we are sitting, as we are walking, as we are lying down, as we are getting up, as in ourselves should be the word of God. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house. Does your house have scripture somewhere in it? And on that gate, the door, that's scripture. You got bumper stickers on your car. <laughs> I bet you if they had bumper stickers on camels, I bet you God would have said it right there. I would, and listen, they had their wagons and all that. I bet you they had the scriptures on them. 
I bet you at some point somebody somebody heard Moses say that, and with their wagons, I bet you somebody went and wrote it on their wagons. You realize Joshua took scriptures and put them on a plaster on a rock? And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall, uh, shall have brought you, let me try that again, shall have brought thee into the land, into the land, see, it's, you're going. This time you're going. Which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, no Ishmael, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. And I preached about this, 10, 11, 12. When they go into that promised land, the houses are already built. And houses full of good things. The houses have already been furnished for them. Which thou fillest not, and wells dig. The wells have already been provided. Which thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. When they go there, there are already vineyards. There are already olive trees ready to be seasoned. And they hadn't planted one of them. Which thou plantest not. Which thou hast, which thou shalt have, eateth and be full. You know, God prepared the nation of Israel by using the heathen to unsaved people. Those heathen were against God in their practices, and God is kicking them out of the land because of their sexual perversion, he said, because of their lack of knowledge of God, because they're not obeying God. They have nothing to do with God. They got small G-O-D-S's. They are killing their children in the name of their God. And God says, I am driving you out of the land. I'm going to bring my people in there, and they're going to take what you have. And there's nothing wrong with buying a car or getting some, something from a heathen who doesn't know Jesus. Just enjoy it. Not everybody who saved can go build cars for people. Not everybody who saved can go build houses. You're going to have to rely on some heathen to provide from your needs. I'm not going to go to that grocery store because you know they're all lost there. Then you're going to starve to death. I used to say I, I wouldn't go in a grocery store that had liquor, but now you 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 can't not go. There are no grocery stores without liquor. Then beware, beware. Least thou forget the Lord in all the riches and every the material that you get and all the good things and you are full and ready to burp out spiritually. Don't forget God. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. Don't forget where you came from. And from the house of bondage. I do not forget the day that I met the Lord that afternoon on a Saturday when I was showing the Bible and showing I'm going to hell and I'm a sinner. I do not forget that time that I came to Calvary and got down to my knees and asked Jesus to save my soul. And I walked out of that empty tomb as a Christian. I have not forgotten that day. I have not forgotten the filth and the wickedness and the sins that I've come out of. I haven't forgot about that after I got saved and I got back into sin for a while and came back. I haven't forgot about all that because that's what God saved me from. That's what God brought me out of. And look at the things in the fullness that God has brought me forth today. All the people I met, people that could have been saved by what we do, people who could have been encouraged to do more for God by what we do. I ought not, and you ought not to forget that. Keep going back to Bethel where you met God. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Look, well, wait a minute. I thought God said not to swear at all. Well, if you are going to swear, you better swear by God's name. That way, you are held accountable to what you swear. Better not, you don't swear, but if you have to, if you've got a legal court document, and you are called to make an oath, You better do it by God's name and realize if you go against God, you're in trouble. That's what the fear of God is. You used to say in a courtroom, so help me God. I don't think they would say that today anymore. Because this nation doesn't fear God. I wonder what they say. He shall not go after other G-O-D-S. For the G-O-D-S 
of the people which are round about you. You're not to go after. You're not to take their customs. They got Christmas trees. You don't have Christmas trees. They got Estar. You're not to have Estar. Look around the churches today. They're coming a time, April 1st, you're going to find churches, Baptist churches even. They're going to have Easter eggs. They're going to have their sunny dresses. They're going to have the sunrise service. That ain't God. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Look at that parenthesis. That's a footnote. That's for you to get. This is important information. A commercial message. You're not to have other gods. And now for a commercial. God is jealous of those gods. Now back to the message. Least the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee. And destroy thee from, from off the face of the earth. Not, the, not just the land. The earth. That idolatry brought you instantly into hell when you died. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. What's that temptation? Oh, God, we can't drink the water. God, you're unable to take care of us. Come on, Lord, show us some water. That's temptation. Come on, God. Who do you think you are? Why would God kill these people? Why would God have war? Why would God kill the babies? You're tempting him. You better be careful. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord. Very, very, very defined on what you do to God. That's a tax word. When you do your taxes, you better make sure you've got every single number, every single amount of, of, of numbers that needs to be on that tax form. And you're to double check it, and you're to triple check it, and you're to make sure that that tax form is correct. You're to make sure, you're to double check, you're to check with that priest, you're to check with your father, you're to check with others to make sure that you're serving God correctly as far as it's you. Today, as a Bible-believing Christian, you ought to check your Bible. Ask your pastor. Pray to the Lord. Seek the Holy Spirit. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ. To make sure that your walk is approved of God daily. The commandments of the Lord your God and His testimony and His statutes, which He has commanded thee. That's not church. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Well, how do you know what is right and how do you know what's good? Some people think drinking and getting, and, and, and getting drunk is good. I don't think that's good. Some people think that if you steal money from somebody, that's good. That's not good in my sight. Me, I like a Big Mac. And I, I like a, the McDonald's fries and I like a Whopper. To other people, that may not be good. A vegetarian wouldn't think that's good. So what is right and good? How do you declare? People come up to us all the time in the street and say, well, I'm good. Well, what's the good standard of good? Maybe you've been in jail. Maybe you've done a harsh crime. Maybe you haven't been in jail and have done a harsh crime. What's your good? To compare to my good. My good is no good. Your good is no good. But the Bible tells you what's right. The Bible tells you what's good. And that's what God's going to lay out through Moses and the children of Israel. I am going to tell you what's right. I am going to tell you what's good. So there will be no question about it. And as far as this chapter, what is right and good right now? God first. Only God. Serve God. Don't have any other gods. And we'll see through the rest of the chapters things that are good. Things that are right that God wants them to do. To be pleased. You ought to find out, the Bible says for a Christian, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You ought to study the Bible, you ought to say, is this right? Is this God approved? Or is it Satan approved? Or is it man approved? You got to make sure it's God approved. You got to make sure it's godly right. In the sight of the Lord, everything you do is in God's sight. You remember, behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. We do more evil than we do good. That it may be well. You want things to be well? You better do right and good with thee. That thou mayest go in and possess the good land. There's that land again, which the Lord swear. See, if we do good. If we do right, as a Jew, in the Old Testament, we get a land. We don't get heaven. Well, you'll get heaven. But it's a land. Right now, as we're living and breathing. And yet there'll still be another land, the new earth. Now, see, watch this. It's right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may be well with thee. 
When did Paul ever do anything wrong? When did Paul ever do a nut right? When did Paul ever do evil? When did Paul ever do... I know, I know he's a sinner, but he did good. He did right in his life as recorded. And look what he ended up with. He was poor. There's two differences between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Two vast differences. There are Christians today that love the Lord and serving God, the only God. They are witnessing in places where they are kept poor, they are kept desolate, and they may be even in prison. They may be even having their heads going to be chopped off soon. They may be in persecution, and they're still living right by God. And you get an ass as a TV preacher, if everything's great and everything's wonderful, your life will be great. He's in the Old Testament. He's not in the New. Better be careful. Those men are not rightly dividing the word of truth. We are not given these promises as such as the Old Testament Jew was given. That's why they want the Old Testament. That's why they want to go back because there will be prosperity. There will be riches. That comes later when we get to New Jerusalem. When we wear the crowns. To cast out all thy enemies before thee, as the Lord has spoken. That's not going to happen in the book of Joshua. They kind of get up, give up. They kind of give in to the people around them. And they get used to them. And they meddle with them. Oh, but when Lord Jesus Christ comes, he'll remove their enemies. He'll cast them off as the goats. Off in the lake of fire. And when thy son asketh thee in the time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord our God give me? Why do we do this, Dad? Lord, why, uh, Dad, why do we got to go to Jerusalem? Why on earth? How can we got to be these particular people? You better have our answer. And you don't, it doesn't say go march him down to church into the Sunday school teacher. He says, when thy son has asked in the time come and say, what means the testimony, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord God has commanded you, you, Dad, then thou, Dad, shall say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. You better not change your history. And then you explain to him the book of Exodus. You get out your scroll. You, you get out the, the, what you have. And you tell that child about the book of Exodus. And the Lord shows signs and wonders. You tell that child those signs and wonders. Great and sore. The boils were sore. All those massive flies were, were great. Upon Egypt. The wonders. How on earth did they have darkness on this part? And there was light over here. That was a wonder. Upon Egypt. Upon Pharaoh. And all his household. Before our eyes. We saw it. We witnessed it. I was there. And the great grandchildren. And the great great grandchildren. When their children ask. They're not going to be able to say we were there. But I got the story from grandpa, from great grandpa, from great grandpa. Very make sure you remember your history. And he, God, brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. You gotta explain who the fathers are. You gotta explain Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord commanded thee to do these statutes, to fear the Lord our God. For our good always, that he might preserve us alive. If you don't do what's right, you're going to be dead. Some of them were capital punishments. As it is this day, and it shall be our righteousness. I don't have righteousness. My righteousness does not come from keeping the law. The Bible says today in the church age, my righteousness is the Lord Jesus Christ's righteousness. The way I approach God in heaven, I show up and I'm standing before God and God, what are you doing here? Jesus Christ, Father. Jesus Christ suffered and died on that cross, Father. And he arose again the third day, Father. And I believe in my heart that he did that. Then that's the righteousness imputed to me. 
I don't go walking them. Look what I did, God. Look how great I was. Kick my butt right out of heaven. Throw me right into hell. If we observe, if conditional to do all these commands. Now see, even the law is strict. But God says you don't have to do it. Suffer the consequences, but you don't have to. Before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. And we're reading it. There's a whole bunch of commandments in the Bible. It's not just 10, 12. All the Deuteronomy commandments. And somebody says, I keep all the commandments, okay? We're going to come up to a battlement upon your house. You had a battlement on your house? Well, no. Then you're going to hell. 